we give your name the praise. We give your name the honor. We give your name the glory. Amen. just back there in 2022 but I'm gonna pull you right now with me to 2023 to let you know my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that working within us come on family let's get ready to go higher as we in our period of praise and worship now let's welcome the Rose Hill Music Ministry Hallelujah, God is worthy to be praised. Come on, can you put your hands together like this? We came to celebrate a true and living God. God, we want you to build your home with us, Lord God, in and through us. We're so grateful, Lord, to you, Jesus. Song says, I'll sing like this, nobody listening but I'll dance like there's nobody watching but you. And I'll worship with my last breath. Give my all till there's nothing left. My focus is you. Jesus, you are my center. My hope, my treasure is found in you. Sing your praises forever. My love, my life, I give to you. Come on, say, I'll sing. And I'll dance. I'll worship with.
what it says You can build your home on my words But I'll stay right here where I'm welcome You can build your home on my words I'm staying, Lord, I'll stay right here You can build your home on my words I'm staying, I'll stay right here Hill Church. Can somebody put the name of Jesus in this atmosphere? Can somebody just lift their hands in praise and adoration into the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords? He didn't have to do it, but he did. Amen? Didn't have to wake us up, but he did. 
This is a very special part of our service. We like to extend a very special greeting to those of you who may be visiting with us for the very first time. So if that's you this morning and you're sharing with us for the very first time, could you lift your hand so that we could recognize you? Are there any first time visitors? Amen. Amen. Now, if you're sitting close to them, can you show them some Rose Hill love as only we can do? Let them know that we appreciate them getting up this morning with all of that liquid sunshine falling. And they came and pressed their way. They could have gone anywhere they chose to. But this morning, they wanted to be at Rose Hill. And we bless God for them. On behalf of our senior pastor, Pastor Danny M. Donaldson Sr., Lady Charmin, and the entire Rose Hill family, can you put your blessed hands together one more time and celebrate the fact that we've got some first-time visitors? We thank you so very much for sharing with us. We want to make sure that you feel comfortable enough that you will come back again and again and again. Amen. That's our prayer, and that's our plea to you this morning. And while you're standing on your feet, can you share some love and show some love for those who are worshiping with us by way of our online platforms? Can you bless God for them as well? Amen. We're excited about all of you this morning, and we, we just want to tell you, keep the praise up. Amen. God bless you. How many of y'all know that the Lord will never fail? He won't leave you in the midst of whatever you're going through. Hallelujah. Cause he won't fail, he won't fail, no he won't leave you, no he won't fail, cause he won't fail, cause he won't fail, he won't leave you, no he won't fail.
won't leave you, Lord. No, he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. Won't leave you. No, he won't fail. I've seen it with my own life. Somebody give God some praise. He keeps every promise, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a promise keeper and he will not fail us. Hallelujah. Nobody like the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship your name. We honor your name. We magnify your name. For your grace is better than life. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's nobody like you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Creation revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sings. All exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name. You are amazing, God. You are all powerful. All struggle we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim You are amazing God Yes you are And we bless you Lord Yes Thank you Lord Who sees lightning bolts and tell them where they should go Heavenly storehouses laden with snow. Who imagined the sun and gave source to its light? Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night. So none can fathom indescribable. You place the stars Oh You are amazing God Come off you know it's amazing Slip up your hands Help us sing this song Oh powerful You're untamable I'll struck we fall As we humbly proclaim You are amazing God But here's my favorite part See the depths of my heart.
unattainable You'll see the depth of my heart And you'll decide to love me the same You are amazing Oh, you're all powerful Unchangeable All struck we fall to our knees As we humbly proclaim you are amazing. Oh, ooh, you are amazing. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You are amazing. Come on, if you could think of one thing he's done, you could open your mouth and say, You are amazing. God, say, say. Keeping us day by day, Lord, we say that you are amazing. You are amazing, God. For even when we couldn't say the way you provided for us, God, and you are amazing. You are amazing, God. Oh, one more time, say you are amazing, God. Everybody say, you are amazing. And let's celebrate our amazing God. Let's celebrate our amazing God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! When I think of your goodness and of all that you've done for me, Hallelujah. You may be seated. I said hallelujah. You are amazing, God. Indescribable, unchangeable. You are unfathomable. Awestruck, we fall to our knees and we worship. And when we run out of things to say, we just say you're amazing. You are amazing. 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 Indescribable. Hallelujah. I could just get stuck right there. Did anybody come to worship today? Anybody come for a word today? Listen. Before I go into the word, I found out that there are two types of worshipers. They are reactive worshipers that react to what God has already done. And then there are proactive worshipers. Those people who know that God's going to do something so great, so fantastic, and so phenomenal in their life that they don't even have to wait until God does it that they are willing to give God an advanced praise. Now watch this. Anybody can be a reactive praiser. When God has done something great for you, when you look back at your life and think about all the things that God has done, anybody can say hallelujah. But as we go into 2023, I'm just wondering, is there anybody that's so certain that God's going to do something amazing in 2023 that you are Go ahead and give God. Hallelujah. Somebody's right there with me. Somebody feels that. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I don't have to wait on anything. I'm so sure that you're going to do it. That I'll throw my hands up in advance. And I'm so sure that you're gonna do it that I got running in my feet already. I'm so sure that you're gonna do it. I'll open up my mouth and shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'll tell you how worthy you are before you even do it. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy.
Hallelujah. Touch three people and tell them he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. Tell them this. Tell them when I think about what he's done, he's worthy to be praised. But I got some feeling down on the inside of me that God's going to do something so great that I'm going to give him a praise. All right, all right, all right, all right. Grab your Bibles. Come on, let's go to work. You know I wasn't here last week. I missed the first Sunday of the new year. I was a little bummed about that. Thank God for Elder Rob. Come on, give God praise for Elder Rob. Touch your neighbor and tell him, even when it looks like I'm missing out, I think God's putting something together. Even when it looks like God's not working on my behalf, I know he's still working on my behalf. Even when it looks bad, I know the best is yet to come. Touch your neighbor and tell him, I speak good things over you in 2023. I speak peace over your life. I speak joy over your life. I speak blessings over your life. I speak blessings over your marriage. I speak blessings. your money. I speak blessings over your family. All right, come on. Y'all stop, stop. Grab your Bible. Stop, stop. Joshua, 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 chapter number one. Touch your neighbor and tell him, yeah, he's been just that good. He's been just that good. He's been just that good. You don't know where I ought to be right now. You don't know how messed up I ought to be right now. But he kept me. And that's why the words of that song mean so much. When you've been with God, and God's been so good to you, you run out of words. Indescribable. Unchangeable. Unfathomable. Amazing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And watch this, I'm, I'm going to start this new series, and this year, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to take my time and teach. That doesn't mean I'm going to preach longer, it just means that if I need to, it'll be continued. And so I don't want to keep you any longer, but I just don't want to feel rushed. And so if I need to do a part two and a part three and a part four, I'll, I'll do it. Because this is what I feel in my spirit. That if you stay connected this year, this will be your greatest year of spiritual growth. And it will be multiplied. Exponential growth. And you'll see exponential benefits in your life. God's been taking me back to scriptures that I thought I knew. But he just keeps giving me revelation. Joshua chapter 1, verse number 7. It says, only be strong and very courageous. 
be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Watch this part. Do not turn from it to the right or the left. Do not be distracted. Do not allow your attention to be distorted. Why? So that you may have success wherever you go. Which means that if your attention and your focus is divided, you won't have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. Then you will make your way prosperous and then you will achieve success. Verse 9 says, have I not commanded you? I want you to note how many times he says, be strong and be courageous. Be strong and be courageous. Do not be terrified nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I want to preach for a moment from the subject, focused attention. You may be seated. Focused attention. <clears throat> what is God teaching the Hebrew people? And what is God teaching us today? Here it is. A desire that has realized or manifested itself is always a desire upon which attention is exclusively concentrated or focused. For an idea is endowed with power only in proportion to the degree of focused attention placed on it. I don't want you to miss this. God can give you a great idea, but it is only as powerful as the attention that you can focus on it. I want you to think about that for a moment. Many of us are asking God for a breakthrough, and God gives you an idea, but the problem is if you cannot focus all of your attention on what God is giving you, then it has no power. And many of us are wondering, why are we a powerless generation? Can I submit? Maybe it's because our attention is divided. Your ability or inability to direct your attention is the measure of your inner power or your inner force. Which means if you can't focus your attention correctly <coughs> on the right thing at the right time, you will lack the power you need to bring it to pass. I'm slowing down. If you cannot focus your attention on the thing you need to focus on at the time you need to focus on it, then you won't have the power you need to bring that thing to pass. Which means, furthermore, if someone can distort your attention, they can dilute your power. Attention distorted power diluted. The word diluted means watered down. Distorted means that your attention is all over the place on everything all at one time. And when you try to think about everything at one time, you have power for no one thing. Now watch this. Why do we struggle to manifest or produce the lives we long to live? It's because we struggle to keep our focus in a world of so many options. Your cell phone alone has a million options. Your TV has a million options. Your kids are working on a million different things. Well, maybe not a million, but a bunch of different things. And most of us are distorted in the area of our focus. Here's what we don't realize. The moment you feel grateful, your healing begins. Watch this. I'm laying foundation. I'm coming. 
The moment you feel worthy and abundant, you start to generate wealth. The moment you feel empowered, you're moving towards success. The moment you fall in love with yourself and with your life, you will attract someone who loves themselves and have the capacity to love you. The moment you are in awe with life, you are primed to have an encounter with God. That's cause and effect. I'll touch on it later. But conversely, just the opposite is true. If you cannot keep your focus long enough, the moment you become ungrateful, your healing ceases. Oh, I'm coming. Give me a minute. The moment you feel unworthy and poor, you stop generating wealth and start producing poverty. The moment you hate yourself and hate your life, you have a little chance of attracting somebody who loves themselves and has the capacity to love you. The moment you become frustrated with your life and hate your life, you limit your chances to have an encounter with God. Most of us are challenged, watch this, to exist in a state of gratefulness or worthiness or abundance. We only embrace it for moments. We are momentarily grateful. (coughs) We feel momentarily abundant. We oftentimes have momentary joy. Momentary peace. But don't exist in a state of peace. And it's because we succumb to the stresses of this world. Stay with me. Now watch this. Stress is always related to external affecting the internal. If you're stressed, the outside is affecting your inside. And because the outside is affecting your inside, you can't maintain your joy. Can't maintain your peace. Can't maintain a feeling of abundance. Can't maintain anything of significance. And, watch this, stress is always based on your senses. What you can see, touch, taste, feel, smell. And so if I don't see what I think I need to see, I'm stressed. If I don't feel the way I think I need to feel, I'm stressed. If I can't put my hands on it, then I don't think it's real. I'm stressed. Watch it. Stress is always related to our inability to control and predict outcomes. Which means if you're stressed right now, it's because you feel like you're out of control and you can't predict the outcome. I want you to think. For every person right now who's stressed, man, I'm telling you, I'm fed up. You're fed up because you can't control something or you can't predict something. I got bills on my counter, and I can't predict the outcome. Somebody walked out of my life. Now, I don't know what's going to happen to me. We were married. Now I'm a single mother. How am I going to provide? You follow me? Yeah, I had financial aid, but I didn't get it this semester. I was doing good, but they laid me off. And now I'm stressed. Why? Because I am no longer in control. And I can't predict the outcome. Now watch this. Can I bring the Bible alive for you? As I work my way to the text. Matthew chapter 14. Jesus feeds 5,000 hungry souls. In the wilderness... The Bible says he places the disciples in the boat and sends them across the lake. Jesus himself goes in the mountain to pray. The Bible says that they rode for hours. And when they got in the middle, there arose a storm and the winds were contrary and they could not make progress. Now watch this. They were working. They were working. And they went from working to fighting. And they went from fighting to struggling. 
And they went from struggling to trying to survive. I'm going to tell you something heavy. You cannot create when you're in survival mode. And many of us in the room are in survival mode. And we wonder why we can't create a better life. We wonder why we can't create better relationships. We wonder why we can't create better this and better that. Because you're in survival mode. But Jesus, conversely, is very different. He comes out of the mountain from praying, and the Bible says that he walks on the water and he catches up with them. I want you to think about something. They were working, and Jesus, watch this, operating in the fourth dimension, the unseen, catches up to them even though they had hours of head start. Which means working versus revelation. Revelation can get you faster to places than working alone can. And the Bible says that there was a storm, but Jesus was walking on the water unaffected by the storm. You got to understand the text. That's why I said I want to bring the Bible to life. The storm, the winds, the rain, the waves, all of that stuff represents the cares of the world. And so what it means is Jesus is unaffected by the cares of the world, but they are affected by the cares of the world. And because they're affected by the cares of the world, they can't make progress. And because Jesus is unaffected by the cares of the world, he can walk on what they're struggling with. Now, I don't know who I came to talk to today, but I came to tell you that as long as you'll keep letting what's on the outside affect what's on the inside, you're going to continue to struggle and live in survival mode. But until you make a transition from this working to revelation and this godly understanding and walking in divine guidance, then God can call you to walk on what other people struggle with and you will not be affected. It's the whole, it's the gist of the text. Everybody talks about the walking on the water, but they don't understand what it represents. And so when, when they see him, they don't recognize him. He tells them who he is. And Peter says, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come. Jesus says to him, come. And Jesus does not stop the storm. Because what we really want is stop the storm so I can walk. Jesus says, no, walk on the storm. In other words, you don't need the cares of the world to stop. You don't need all this stuff that's going on to stop. You just need to stop letting what's going on affect you on the inside. And if you stop letting what's going on on the outside affect you on the inside, you can walk whether the storm stops or not. And you can be unaffected by what people are affected by and be more effective because they are infected because of what they let affect them. And the Bible says, watch it, it says in verse 30, 14 and 30, it says, but seeing the wind, talking about Peter, he became frightened. Seeing the wind, seeing the effects of the wind, he became frightened. And when he began to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and took him and said to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? What is he saying? Why did you let the outside mess with your inside? I came to preach to somebody today and ask you a question. Why are you letting the outside affect your inside? Why are you letting what you see on the outside affect your belief? Why are you letting what you see on the outside affect your faith? Why? Watch this. When you are stressed, your brain goes into an alarm state called high beta. That means that your primary focus now becomes everything around you. And in that state, you try to control and predict everything. And watch this. Every person you know, every place, everything has a place in your brain. And when you're thinking about everything at once, your brain begins to fire, and it's like a lightning storm in the clouds. And now you are distracted. It can't focus on any one thing. Most of us live our life that way. Every day, our focus is distorted. Worrying about this, worrying about that, worrying about this, worrying about that, worrying about what they say, worrying about what they say, worrying about, worrying about how do I look on Instagram, how do I look on Facebook, worrying about what are they going to say about me, worrying about... Huh? 
how I'm going to make a living today, what I'm going to eat today, how I'm going to cook today, what I'm going to... And your life, your brain is just like... The only time your brain gets peace is when you sleep. And sometimes it doesn't get peace then. Because you go to sleep with too much on your mind. Which means that your body could be under 24-hour stress. The brain starts firing incoherently, and your focus is distorted. And fight or flight is invoked. And so now, watch this, you wonder why people are so combative. Road rage is at a high. Because fight or flight. So now I got to make a decision. Am I going to run or am I going to fight? And all day long, you running from stuff and fighting stuff. Jumping out your car in the street, talking about fighting somebody because they pulled over in front of you. What? Go to fisticuffs at work? (laughs) Can't finish anything. Start a project, quit. Start this, quit. Start that, quit. Flight. Every time stuff gets tough. Who I'm preaching better than you shout? <laughs> Here it is. Let me show you something powerful. I finally made it to the text. The first thing the text says is this. I want you to look at it with me. Verse number one. Chapter number one. Now, it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. Why did God think it necessary to write that it was after the death of Moses? That the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, his servant, saying, My servant Moses is dead, so now arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to a land which I am giving to them, the sons of Israel. Moses is dead. Joshua, I want you to take up where he left off. I want you to take them over the Jordan, which represents taking them over something they've never been to a point to a juncture they've never been before. Take them into a new territory. Not just in geography, but a new territory. Because you can't get new geography without a new mentality. Now watch it. It was after the death of Moses. Why is that important? Because whenever something traumatic, dramatic happens in your life, it's supposed to serve as a wake up. When somebody dies, it ought to shake you and make you say, okay, let me examine my life. What's going on in my life? Some death, something traumatic, something dramatic. All these events are wake up calls. Got fired. Wake up. Somebody walked out of a relationship, wake up. Let me examine, am I on the right path for my life? Am I on the right path that God has ordained for my life? Maybe it's a good time for me to do a survey, an analysis, an analogy of my life. I'm 50, am I going in the right direction? I'm 40, am I going in the right, I'm 30, am I going in the right direction? Do I need to make some changes? Am I on the right road? Am I just trying to be secure? Is this really what I want to do? Is this really where I want to be? Or am, am I playing it safe? Have I taken any risk in my life? Do I, when I get to the end of my life, am I going to regret my safeness? Am I going to regret the fact that I took no risk? Am I going to reject, re, am I going to regret the fact that I retired from a job I hate? Am I going to regret the fact that I sold myself short? That I could have went for somebody who really loved me, but I went the safe route. Jordan representing this threshold 
And then God speaks to Joshua and says, watch this. This is powerful. Every place on which the sole of your foot steps, I have given it to you, just as I have spoken to Moses. Now watch this. I know we're thinking about everywhere that your feet step. But, but feet in that context really means, watch this, everywhere that your mind can comprehend. Watch this. The Bible says beautiful. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. You look it up. Romans chapter 10 talks about beautiful are the feet of those who, who spread the gospel. Now, if I take my shoes off, my feet ain't beautiful. But my mind is. So beautiful is the mind. What can I comprehend in my mind? Watch this. What he's telling them is, I have given it to you, and until you can accept the fact that it's yours, even though the evidence denies it, you cannot have it. Let me talk to the other side. Until you can, watch this, live under the assumption that it's yours, even though it looks like it's not yours because the evidence denies it, you cannot possess it. So when he says everywhere that your foot has tread, in other words, everywhere that your mind has conquered, you can have. I've given it to you. It's yours. But the problem is we want to believe and then for God to do it, we want to believe that God can do it and then be convinced. But no, he's saying to those who can be convinced before I make a move. Come here, somebody. This life changing right here, what I'm telling you. Those who can be convinced before I make the walls fall flat. Those who can be convinced before I spread the water in the Jordan. Those who can be convinced before I do all my wondrous works are those who will see my wondrous works. Why y'all so quiet? Watch it. How do I support my theory? Look at the rest of the text. He says, no one will be able to oppose you all the days of your life. Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not desert nor abandon you. Now, here it is. Be strong and courageous. Don't be stressed out. Don't be worrying. For you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their father to give them. Only be strong and very courageous and do according to all that is written in the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Here it is. God has given them the secret to success. What is it? To not be moved by outward appearances, not to be moved by your stress and control and focus your attention in the midst of what looks like adversity. Here's what I must understand. I must understand, especially when God is calling me to do something huge and counterlogical, something that defies logic, I must understand that there is a spirit realm called the kingdom that is invisible but controls everything in the visible. The Bible says those things that you do see did not come from those things which were seen. They came from the unseen which means they came from the spirit realm, which controls the visible realm. The invisible controls the visible. But watch this. The reason why we struggle is we spend all of our time in the visible working. When it will only change via the invisible. Bring me my plan. <clears throat> now, right here, shut it down for me. Right here. I got this beautiful plant. This, this is an ivy, right? All right. All right. I know what it is. I just, want, I just want you to be in agreement with me. Now, look at it. Look at it. It's overflowing. It's overflowing. And everybody looks at it. If you look at it, you say, oh, that's a beautiful plant. It's a beautiful plant. But watch this. It's only beautiful because of its roots. The part you can't see.
And what you see in the visible is a byproduct of what's happening in the invisible. Now watch this. If this plant starts to die, I could put water on the leaves and, and do all kinds of stuff to the external, but it won't change. That's why when you water it, you water on the inside of the pot. Why? Because you want the water to hit the roots. Why? Because when the roots are healthy, the fruit is healthy. And when you want it to grow, you fertilize it. You don't fertilize these leaves. You fertilize the soil. And when the water hits the fertilization, the fertilizer, it goes down into the soil and it, it, it attracts itself to the roots and it makes the roots grow. And when the roots grow, the outside grows. But the problem is we've always talked about you got to work harder, got to work harder. Yes, you have to work. But if you're not working on the invisible and you're just working on the visible, then you can only move stuff around. There will be no growth. It's the invisible that you can't see that's producing the visible that you can see. And so what God is telling them, watch this. That's why he says, be strong, be courageous, because the invisible is going to win the fight. What's going to show up in the visible is going to be a product of the invisible. I just want you to make sure you're getting it. It's going to be a product of the invisible. And watch this. It's that which is going to bring the walls flat. Watch this. That which you don't even understand. But because you believe and are convinced before, I have ways... My thoughts are not your thought. My ways are not your. I have ways you know not of to get this thing done. If you do the work in the unseen, and that's what prayer and meditation is all about the unseen work. Because what he's really saying is watch this, until I get your head and your heart in alignment. Watch this. Your mind, your emotions, and your inner conversation, all in alignment. Then and only then do you have the faith to move mountains. We always talk about, I say to this mountain, everybody's saying, move mountain, move. No, not on your outside. The old man leaves based on, watch this, new conversations on the inside, which means when my mind gets right and my emotions are lined up, I have new conversations on the inside. Instead of saying, I can't do this, won't do this, then my conversation starts to line up with everything else that says, you know what? I don't know how it's going to get done, but I got a feeling. I know it's going to get done. And if God says that we're going to cross to Jordan and go over and the walls are going to fall, then I'm going to believe that God's going to do. I don't know how he's going to do all the stuff he's going to do for me in my life. Somebody, you need to just square that up right now and say, I don't know how God's going to do all the stuff he's going to do for me in 2023. I don't know what he's going to do exactly in 2023. But I know it's going to be something so miraculous that I go ahead and put my faith on it and become convinced that God can do it right now. And then God can do it the way he wants to do it. And so I'm going to get in my prayer closet and see what God told me to see. I'm going to get in my meditation room and see what God told me to see and begin to work in the invisible so that things can change in the visible. He gives them a secret. He says, he says, Meditate on it day and night. Meditate. We don't talk about meditation much in church because we think meditation is weird. But meditation and prayer are really, are really kissing cousins. Meditation means I get still. Watch this. Meditation means I close my eyes. And here's what happens. Watch this. God gives them a picture of what's going to happen so that their brain can orchestrate what's going to happen. It can see what's going to happen. But then you go into meditation, watch this, and then you give it to God. 
You go into prayer and give it to God. I know what your word says. We're going we to go over there. We're going to cross the Jordan. We're going we to conquer. But I don't know how we're going to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it to you in the secret place and say, God, I'm going to give it to a God that's greater than I am. And what meditation does is it helps you get out of yourself and watch this out of your own way so that you're not moved by your flesh and that's what prayer and meditation is about, getting outside of my flesh so that these restrictions and, and all these limita- limiting thoughts won't be popping up in my mind so I can only believe. That's why I told you when, when the pandemic was going on, I found something in meditation. I got still. Close my eyes. Look around. 20 minutes have passed. 30 minutes have passed because you get caught up in this realm it's realm of peace and joy, and nothing has changed externally, but something changes internally. And when something changes internally, it has to be revealed externally. And so I can't keep communing with God and changing internally and my situation not change externally. And the problem is so many people are trying to change their situation externally that they haven't communed with God and become changed internally They don't have a hunger for God to know him, to get by themselves and alone and, 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 and value that time alone and say, you know what? I don't just want it. I need it. But if you ever tap in, if you ever tap in, you'll come to a place where I need it. Every day I got to get down in my secret place and commune with God on another level so that God can begin to strengthen me and build me and build my belief and build my faith and build my joy and build my peace. And you can't keep doing that day after day and and, and not be changed internally and then not have a change externally. And watch this, then, then stuff starts happening for you. And people look, it doesn't mean that you're not going to have to do anything. You have to do something. They had to march around the wall. I'm going to preach about all that. They had to do some stuff. But what I do now is direct it. I'm not just out there swinging that stuff. I'm not out there just taking chance. I'm going to make something happen. No, I'm being directed. Oh, God, you missed it. I'm being directed. Then you start experiencing these things called synchronicities. Synchronicities is when when stuff starts happening, and it looks like it's by chance, but it's not by chance. It looks like it's by coincidence, but it's not by coincidence. Opportunities start showing up, and it looks like you you because of your hard work, but it wasn't because of your hard work, not your external hard work. It's because your internal hard work and your internal hard work combined with some external hard work produced something in your life that was so great and magnificent that people don't understand it, and they think it just happened because of happenstance or coincidence. You just, you just lucky. See, if I was lucky like you, tell me if you do what I do, you'll be lucky too. You won't be lucky, you'll be blessed. And you'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Blessed coming and blessed going. You'll be the head and not the tail, above only and never beneath. All right, I'm closing. Come on, guys. Y'all come on back. I'm closing. And God is telling them, he keeps telling them over and over again, why? Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Don't be dismayed. Don't be frightened. Don't be terrified. Why? Because you can't be in stress and be in faith. You can't be in survival mode and be creative. Let let me say that again. You can't be in survival mode and be creative. How many people in here, don't raise your hand because I don't want nobody to know, but you be honest with yourself and say, but I've been living in survival mode. Yeah, I've been living in survival mode, trying to balance this and balance that, robbing Peter to pay Paul, doing this to do that. Girl, I can't do this. I got this going on. I got this. I got that. I got that. And what you really need is. <sighs> to 
say, I serve a God that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think. And every day I'm communing with him. Every day I'm growing. Every day I'm getting to know him better and better. Every day my faith is. Now God begins to make things happen for me. Make my business prosper when nobody else's is. Make my marriage prosper when everybody getting divorces. Make my kids make good decisions when other people are making bad ones. Make. Because of the work I do in the secret place. Have a little talk with Jesus. I don't really need to tell him about my troubles. But I visualize the solution. And I get out of my own way. And God begins to direct my path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. And he will direct your path. Come on, stand to your feet. <clears throat> Sing a little bit, guys. Sing a little bit. He'll answer. Now watch this. If you're here and you say, Pastor, that message was for me. I, I've been in survival mode last year, two years, I don't know, five years, ten years. I need to turn it over to God. That's you. Come on, let me pray for you. Come on to the altar. Let me pray with you. Come on. Can you lean on? Where do? Come, come, come. I love this part. Say, I go. And worship. Listen, if you turn it over to God, God can do amazing things in your life. I'm telling you, I, I was sick, man. I, I had a sinus infection. I got better. I went to an event, got COVID. Don't worry, I'm better. I've tested negative for a long time now. I'm good. But <clears throat> while I was sick, I got really sick. I had sinus infection. My ears started clogging up. I couldn't hear. I didn't like that. It makes me anxious. 
And so I fought for it and got over steam and did everything I could possibly do, took medicine, and it still seemed like it wouldn't work. So I just walked outside on my, my little back concrete area, and I just prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and declared things over my life. And I went and sat down, I got my Bible, and just started reading my word. And my kids were trying to help me, and my son said, Dad, I'm going to sleep. I said, don't worry, son, I'm going to be fine. And it's crazy. I stood up to give him a hug, and my ear pow, popped open. I said, wow. I got sick, and then one morning I woke up. I had taste, but I didn't realize I didn't have smell. I couldn't smell. And so I said, God, and I'm reading, uh, some people who have COVID, two weeks they can't smell, a month, some people months. I said, God, that's not my reality. I need my smell back. I need my smell. And so I start asking God, God, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Start researching stuff, and then God showed me this little technique online, and then, then I had to touch something, and then you get somebody to pluck you in the back of the head. And so I, I had my wife. I said, pluck me in the back of the head. Go ahead. Get you a shot. <laughs> she did it all. She did it about three or four times that day. Pow. And before I went to sleep that night, I said, I can smell. I can smell. I can smell. I'm just, showing, I'm just sharing some stuff. One night I was going to sleep. My ear was ringing so loud I couldn't, I couldn't even sleep. I woke up the next morning still ringing. I said, God, you got to help me. God took me to a video, showed me this, some pressure points, and I pressed them pressure points, and, and, the, and the ringing stopped. Which means that God has a solution for everything. For everything. For everything. For everything for everything and I'm still confessing stuff over me right now but some of you watch this you're carrying too much weight you won't last long carrying that type of weight <clears throat> even with this the church and all this and building the project and everybody saying um, I have people call me pastor how you feel about it we raised the money you, you feel I said I'm fine Ain't my church. I don't need a church. If God wants the church built, then God, God will provide the way to build it. And he'll build it in the time frame he wants to build it. I'm not losing any sleep over it. <laughs> and so, watch this. So we start making some improvements here. You, you can't, just because you plan on getting rid of your house, don't mean you can't make improvements to the house you... I'm going to do some more stuff to make this place what it's supposed to be. But you got to get to a place where you say, I, I, Lord, I turn it over. I turn it over. I turn it over. I turn it over. And sometimes you have to learn that when you're in the midst of something. You're in the midst of something. I can remember, I'm just testifying, my brother Robert was really, really sick. He's been really sick a couple of times in his life. And it was really bad, and they were saying that he might not make it through the night and all that stuff. And I remember literally having chest pains one night, and I told the Lord this. I said, Lord, I can't handle this. If I don't give it to you tonight, I might die. And that night I learned how to give it to God. And here's what I'm hoping for you, that you will learn through whatever you're going through right now to give it to God. Say, God, you can handle it. I don't want to carry the weight. I don't even want to feel the effects of it. I'm going to walk like it's already done. I'm going to walk like I'm already healed. I'm going to walk like I'm already employed. I'm going to walk like I'm already married. I'm going to walk like I'm all... Whatever it is that you believe in God for, I'm going to walk in it. <clears throat> now watch this. The truth is, I don't really need to pray for you. You just need to pray for yourself. And I will speak a word of prayer over you, but I want you to, for the next few moments, I want you to have a conversation with God. Tell God, I've been through a lot this year. I've been through a lot in 2022 and these previous years. And God, I, I don't want to carry this weight no more. I want to give it to a God that's capable. 
And God, I want to see you open doors for me and do things for me. And I don't want to be limited by my income because I work this job that I can't do this or I can't do that. I'm, I got a fixed income. No, nobody fixes your income but you. If you keep fixing it, it'll be fixed. Nothing. All things are possible to him that believes. The question is, can you believe? You mean stage four cancer? Can you believe? Then it's possible. Come on. Have a conversation with God. Go. This, this, this year you're going to have to be obedient obedient to the voice of God there are a few more people who should be at this altar right now and you're thinking I should have come up there and so if that's you you want to join us come on come on join us right now before I pray come on come on come on come on there you go be obedient Now watch this. The, the reason why I say that is some people say, well, I don't, I'm not going to move. It's just, just a few steps. But a few steps are a sign of faith. And sometimes obeying God can be challenging. I tell a story one time. I was in a, in a worship service in the midst of a bunch of men praying. And God said, get on your knees. I'm like, God, right here? So get on your knees. Had to be obedient, get on my knees. Sometimes what God tells you to do is not comfortable for you. But here, here's a heavy question I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to let you get out of here. How can you experience something new and it be comfortable? So you're going to have to experience some uncomfortableness. All right. Father, as I stand here, these your children. God, many standing in the aisles, standing at the altar, standing in pews. God, have various hurts. Some are grieving the death of a loved one. Some are just grieving because their life hasn't worked the way that they thought it would. And it feels like time is running out. Some God are heavy laden. They got kids and stuff going on and bills and it's a lot. There's some people, Lord God, who's standing here have some health issue. But God, you can meet us all where we are. And God, I thank you right now that if you move through this place, God, that you will begin to heal that you will begin to direct, Lord God, that you will begin to govern our path, Lord God, that you will give peace that surpasses understanding, that when somebody leaves the altar, they'll feel better today, but they won't even know why, because it will look like that situation hasn't changed. 
but something on the inside of them has changed. And because of that, God, they'll never be the same. And so God, move like only you can. God, touch them at the point of their greatest need, Lord God. Heal, deliver, set free, Lord God. Hallelujah. And God, we don't even have to wait any longer to say thank you, God. To give you praise, Lord God. To lift our hands, Lord God. And say, God, that we're going to let every setback serve as a reset, Lord God. It's going to reset us. It's going to wake us up, Lord God. It's going to put us on the right path, Lord God. It's going to do something great in our lives. We're not going to let it serve as a stumbling block, but as a stepping stone. God, we give you honor and praise right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the saints of God said, amen, amen, amen. Come on, touch somebody, touch somebody, and tell them I speak healing over you. I speak healing over you. I speak healing over you right now. I speak healing over you. Come on, grab your seats, grab your seats. This is what I want you to do. I want you to grab a seed. We're about to give. But listen, I want you to grab a seed that would make you feel like you're a generous person. A generous seed. What is that for you? Is it $100? $1,000? $5,000? $10,000? Somebody $10? $5? Look at me for a minute. Here's what I've learned. God will bless the generous. But when is the last time you gave a generous seed? Something that was a little challenging for you. You said, man, I really didn't plan on giving this, but I'm going to give this today. I'm going to give this today. I was going to give 20, but I'm going to give 40 today. I'm going to give a generous seed today. We'll make a church quiet, talk about giving. But what's funny is we, we all want to be given too. But it starts with being a generous giver. Yeah, it starts with being a generous giver. So grab, if you're giving your tithe, you're giving your offering, grab something that, that makes you a generous giver. That's what's in my spirit. Grab it, put it in the envelope, grab your cell phone, sew it via the text line or go to our website and sew it. When you're ready, I'm going to speak a word over you. Bless me.
Oh Lord, oh Lord say bless me indeed. Enlarge in my territory. how we thank you, how we love you and honor you, not only with lip service, God, but we honor you in and throughout giving. And so, God, today we give a generous seed so that the work of the ministry may be completed. We give a generous seed, God. But, God, I pray that every person who obeys, God, that you will bless them 100 times over, Lord God, that they shall not suffer for their given one degree but shall prosper because of their obedience. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Sow your seed, sow your seed. Amen. Pass the buckets, sow your seed. Pass the buckets, sow your seed. Everybody ready to celebrate just a little bit before we go home? Somebody say. Stop right there. Let me give you some, give you some announcements. Some announcements. Of course, this is the year of focused attention. The year of focused attention. Intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer. Come out for a time of prayer with the intercessors on Saturday, the 14th of January, 9 a.m. at the church. Prayer is open to everyone. Listen, prayer is open to everyone. You do not have to pray. 
Sometimes people are intimidated to pray in public so they won't come to prayer. Nobody's going to require you to pray. It's completely voluntary if you want to pray, you know, publicly. But you can be a part of it, and it'll be a blessing to you. We're looking for youth teachers, youth teachers. Uh, the youth ministry is hoping to add some great teachers so youth classes can be added to our 1115 service. See, please see Brother Tim Morris or Sister Carolyn Bell if you have a heart for youth and would love to volunteer at least one Sunday per month. That's our prayers that you only can have to do one Sunday per month. So if you're a teacher and love teaching kids and want to be a part of that, we would love to have you on our team. You can find Brother Tim or find any of our ministers or elders, and they'll take you to the right place. Somebody say Daniel fast. Now watch this. I'm going to help everybody who says I need to get my mind right. I wasn't here last week, so we didn't start last week. So we're going to fast the last 21 days of the month. All right? So you got a few more days to get your mind right. All right? So we're going to start on the 11th. The 11th. We're not eating meat. That means no seafood, no chicken, no poultry, no eggs, none of that. Right? No dairy. And for one week of that, at least we're going to do no sweets. Now, let me explain something to you. You keep saying you want something different. But to get something different, you're going to have to be willing to do something different. And when you do this, the first few days are going to be challenging if you haven't done it before. The first few days, you might have headaches or be a little groggy. But after you get past that, you're going to have focus like you've never had. You're going to be able to commune with God like you haven't before. Watch this. Food will stop becoming a God for you. And you'll eat to fuel your body, not just to fill your body. Let, let, let me say it to the other side. Fuel your body, not just fill your body. Now, how many people can I count on to come on in with me? Now, here, here it is. Listen, people say, well, what am I going to eat? Shh, real quiet, guys. People say, what am I going to eat? All you got to do is find some vegan recipes because essentially you're vegan for 21 days. Find you some vegan recipes. You can make them at home. They got a vegan restaurant here, one vegan restaurant for sure, and some with some vegan dishes. But listen, you can make it at home. It's not hard. You're going to have to prepare. Yes, you're going to have to prepare, but... You'll be all right. There you go. She said it best. Sister Ruth said it best. You'll be all right. But you'll, you'll be proud of yourself when you finish. And here's the thing. Listen, if you fall, the fast is not over. You just start over again. Because see what happens is, oh, I ate the wrong thing. It's over for me now. <laughs> no. Just get right back in there. And finish the rest of the fast with us. Amen? All right. Good. A couple more things. Uh, Jameric Campbell and Youth for Praise, ninth year anniversary celebration will be on the 14th of January at 6 p.m. at Beacon Light of Hammond. Doors will open at 530. Jameric sings with us. Uh, he's a guy who sings with us, always does a great job. He does a great job with his young choir, and uh, they're going to be celebrating nine years. What a blessing that is. Amen? All right. I'm, I'm calling an audible. Everybody listen to me. I'm calling an audible. This is for me. Bible study is not going to start until I do this. Next, this, this Wednesday. Somebody say this Wednesday. This is a real audible. I want all the men to meet me here at 7 o'clock. All the men. The next week, I want all the women. The next week, I want all the singles. And the next week, I want all the married folks. Got me? And we'll start Bible study uh, in February sometime after uh, maybe a second, third, maybe third or fourth week in February. We'll see how it goes. But I want to I minister to the guys. I want to minister to the ladies. I want to minister to our singles. 
then I want to minister to our married people. Where are my guys at? Raise your hand if you're male. Amen. Watch this. I want to see you Wednesday night. I know it's short notice. But I, can I see you Wednesday night? And do me a favor. Bring some of your friends. Bring some brothers with you. Wednesday, not Thursday. Wednesday. Wednesday night. Choir, and they do some rehearsing, some other stuff on Thursday. So Wednesday night. All right? All right. Sound good? All right. Daniel Fast starts on the what? All right. We got prayer requests. Don't forget, you always put your prayer requests on the altar. We'll pray over them. Our intercessory team will pray over them. And we've got some phenomenal praise reports as a result of it. All right. Help me thank God for Lady Shorman and Megan. Yep. And, man, our, our baby Megan has got a job. She's got a job. She's gainfully employed. Amen. She'll be starting work real soon. So proud of her. Amen. Amen. All right. I don't think she's too excited to pay her own bills, but got to happen to everybody. All right. Stand to your feet. Let's go home. God bless you. Love you all. Thank you for worshiping with us today. All of our visitors, thank you for worshiping with us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for those who braved the rain and the elements to come to hear a word. I pray, God, that that word, God, was so filling that it forever shapes and changes their existence, Lord God. And, Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, give us traveling grace until we meet again. It's in Jesus' name we pray. The saints of God said amen. God bless you. Go in peace.